Thanks, dear viewers, for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. Prime 10 News Cast on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's Economic County, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. Teachers take to the streets in the nation's political county, Yaoundé, protesting against poor working conditions and flows in the recruitment uh, process launched by the Ministry of Basic Education of the Republic of Cameroon. Thus, stumped the Prime Ministry in the nation's political county, Yaoundé, asking for solutions to their Lights and will also be taking you in this newscast to the locality of Nguti in the southwest region of the country. And we're going to be showing you the state of administrative affairs in that administrative unit where several civil servants have abandoned their duty posts as a result of the insecurity and the deepening four year long crisis. David us. Thanks for joining us in this edition of the news. 30 Cameroonian students studying on scholarship in Morocco have stormed the embassy of Cameroon in that country over a difficult and even deplorable studying conditions abroad. They are now living in the embassy and asking government to fulfill its promises uh, to support them with the sum of 1 million francs CFA. Details with Innocent Aziz. Video showing 30 Cameroonian students who benefited government special support to further their studies in Morocco. They are in front of the Cameroonian embassy. Les étudiants camerounais. According to author of this video, they have been sleeping here for four days because government, through the Ministry of Employment and Vocational Training, has not granted them since two to three years via scholarship dues. But the fee comme les garçons. That these Cameroonians have been reclaiming their rights to no avail. That is is lodging and school fees. Vous le voyez, les autorités ne disent encore rien pour le moment. Their health and feeding conditions are deplorable. Que gérer ici. Merci. One million francs CFA is the amount they have been expecting from government of Cameroon for their lodging and upkeep. According to them, all efforts to be held by the Cameroon Embassy in Morocco and the authorities in Yaoundé have been in vain. In an audio message, one of the students clarifies that they were told the problem is at the level of the Ministry of Finance because the minister is the one to order for disbursement and transfer of the money to them. He says the government seems not to see them important with some incompetent state officials telling them over and over to be patient. A rhythm the suffering Cameroonian students on scholarship are compelled to adhere to or get lost. The Cameroon Embassy, despite all the means at its disposal, has not been able to get the compatriots a place for their accommodation temporarily, while Yaoundé continues continuous contemplating on whether or not to send them their lodging and school fees. At least 100 Cameroonians are still stranded in India because of the coronavirus pandemic since the country and of course Cameroon uh, also closed the uh, borders because of the coronavirus pandemic. The Cameroonians have been uh, living there in uh, India and unable to uh, make it back home despite efforts that the government has been undertaking to bring back hundreds of uh, companies patriots or Cameroonians who uh, were stranded abroad because of the coronavirus pandemic and their documents and uh, personal details have been sent to the Ministry of External Relations but the government of Cameroon is yet to react in view of taking them out of uh, that difficult situation and among them five persons 
have died two died of cancer while two of stress and uh, another an 18 year old a Cameroonian who recorded a viral video on their situation lost his father take a listen to one of them I came to India on the 28th of February 2020 I was to return home back on the 24th of March 2020 that's approximately a month's time I came to India with my father for medical checkup and after the medical checkup we could not return home due to the COVID-19 pandemic and all borders were closed. So after the checkup, the doctors recommended that my father could start up a dialysis and while doing the dialysis he should prepare for a kidney transplant. But since we could not do the dialysis over here because it was expensive and also we had no money on us. To like carry over the dialysis we pleaded with the government to like please send a repatriation plane or a, a, any flight to please come pick us up but the government has been silent right out from that time till now my father had to die of kidney failure on the 27th of june 2020 so I'm using this opportunity to plead with the government to please help us out. There are so many of us here. We are more than we are 119 Cameroonians here who are stranded. Some they even have homes. Some have been removed from hospital because they can no longer afford hospital bills. Some cannot even feed themselves. I for one I cannot because I'm all here by by myself with the dead uh, with the dead body of my father. So please, I am pleading with the government to please help us out so that we can return home and be happy and, and also I can return to my family and mourn my father so that, and I can also go back to school. Exams are, will soon start and I need to write the exams too. So we are pleading with the government to please help us out. Thank you. One of the Cameroonians stranded in India calling on the government to help bring them back home. And other Cameroonians facing similar challenges back at home are teachers. Teachers of the basic education sector in the Republic of Cameroon, some of them took to the streets in the nation's political capital Yaoundé, protesting against poor working and living conditions and flaws which they identified in the last recruitment launched by the Ministry of Basic Education and they stumped the Ministry of Basic Education but didn't get answers and so they moved on to the Prime Ministry in the nation's political capital Yaoundé urging the Prime Minister to provide solutions so they applied their teachers who were trained in the institutions in the country and since their training they have not been recruited into the public service some of them were recruited recently but they are decrying flaws in the process of recruitment and indicating that even though government cannot recruit all teachers in the country should make sure that they who were trained in the state institutions should be well treated even if they are teaching in private schools across the country and they stumped the prime ministry today demanding for solutions so they applied take a listen to one of the teachers uh, wazi kranwa tangwa he is a teacher from the northwest region we graduated from the teachers training college we have not been able to, to the, the, the government has not been able to integrate us into the public service so we came here today in order for us to express our grievances the other time we are at the Minister of uh, Basic Education, today we are at the Prime Minister's office, is to, for us to show the government how serious that problem is. Because we are unable to feed our families at home. That is why, even in the, in the private sector in which we are working, we are unable to feed our families. They don't take care of us. They don't, they don't bother how, how much are they paying us. Nobody cares to look whether they, they, those teachers that we, we took them into the government, how are they doing. So now, we are left at the mercy of the private sector where those uh, pri private uh, uh, proprietors, they, they, take, they take us, they use us as a one. Even during this uh, coronavirus, we have not been paid. 3,000 were recruited back. The 3,000 following the minister, 
the, the, the community and everything. People have almost 40 years. Some of us, our colleagues, are almost 40 years. They are going, they are going on, on retirement already without being integrated. But the children who have 19 years are being recruited into public who have their KPM around 2015. We have documents here to prove that. But I know it's not easy for the government to recruit all of us. I know it's not easy, but they should try and ameliorate our situation. If, if we are to teach in the private sector, why did not come and fix a price and really examine and see what, how they are paying us, how they are treating us? They said uh, we are having, we are supposed to, they were supposed to recruit 12,000. It was not well selected. So we will be serious to say it and we will say uh, it is teachers are people who always say things as they are. And joining us on this edition of the news is an educationist, Joe Boniface G, an educationist uh, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me to express my opinions to you and my viewers. All right. Uh, the excerpt uh, that was aired some few seconds ago in that excerpt, Wazi Kranua Tangwa, who is a teacher from the northwest region of the country, said, teachers say things the way they are. Is that true? Yes, I agree with him fully and I really sympathize with him. When I hear him speak like a teacher, I have a lot of passion about teachers because what the teachers actually go through in life is very, very, very wonderful to express. So when he speaks, I listen to him and I feel for him. It's just like what happened in 2015 when we were there with the Catholics sometimes ago and uh, I know the pains he undergoes through. Mm. When you see teachers like uh, those you saw in those images on the streets heading to the Ministry of Basic Education, no solution. And then I move over to the Prime Ministry, sitting on the ground, begging for solutions to the applied. What do you think about the situation of teachers in Cameroon? Uh, today? Unfortunately, Cameroon has become that kind of a country where everybody has to go to the street before the government listen. Even when they listen, they listen one ear. It is very unfortunate that everything in this country, no matter the resources we have, we have not been able now to fully exploit them and use them for the betterment of humanity living in this country we call ours. So it is very unfortunate that uh, each time there is a situation, people have to come to the street. And most often than not, even when they come to the street, the solutions are not fetched. Just like what I listened to my colleague saying there. He has gone and they have gone in a group to meet the, the Ministry of Basic Education, there was no fruit gotten from that area. They are moving to the Prime Minister. What would they see? The, 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 the bottom line is that they have to calm them down at the end, they carry their problems home, and they continue to deal with this problem, which is very, very unfortunate for people living in this country. It's not the first time teachers are taken to the streets. Um, it's almost a, a frequent thing in the Cameroon. Why is it that this problem is persisting? Yes, Mr. Babila, when you ask me this question, I really appreciate this because it brings me back to 1983 collective convention that was signed between the government and the private sectors. Besides, I want to make it very clear here that education is totally and completely the responsibility of the state. The state has a duty to educate all its citizens, I quote. Now, people like private sector coming as partners when they come as partners, they come now to assist the government in educating the population of that particular country. Unfortunately, Cameroon government has failed to recognize that these teachers who are, are teaching the private sector are also people who are trained, like what he was saying there. They are trained. They are offering education to Cameroonians, young Cameroonians, and most often than not, most of the impressive results come from these private sectors even. But unfortunately, the salary is that catechist type where it is very difficult for a teacher to live up to expectation. And at the same time, you find teachers living like beggars, acrid beggars, despite the knowledge they impact on the children and the government stay aloof. Unfortunately, the government is still failing in its mission to provide subvention, which is supposed to be its the role every year to augment the salary and the living situation of teachers. Unfortunately, I don't think they are even giving again. Even when they used to give, I know the situation I've been a fee for 23 years. 
I think I know a lot about all this uh, this mafia. Is when they give some of the private education uh, education proprietors, they keep in their pocket, of which that money is intended to augment the salaries of teachers of the private sector of education, who are contributing the same way government teachers are contributing. Unfortunately, they happen to find themselves in the private sector where they are not capable to get the payment package like their counterparts. Mm. You have been in the teaching field for uh, a long period of time today and you master the, 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 the field very well. I, is the situation of teachers in Cameroon, notably private uh, school teachers, as bad as you, you seem to, prevent, to present it? Are, are they really beggars? Have they been transformed into beggars? As yes, I say so and I maintain it. Those who listen to me will know that I mean what I'm saying, especially in the, the private sector. Even the government sector is not better. That is why, Mr. Babila, I want to tell you, if you like, go into the field and make research. Most of the teachers who are even teaching in private college are teachers from the government, government colleges. Get it very well. Why are they coming there? Because even the payment package within the government cycle is very small. Because it's very small, they are forced now to go into teaching in the private sector for hours. And then at the same time, they negotiate. With their, with, their, with, with, their, with their bosses at the level of, a, of, a, of the government school, where when their salary comes, they know how to go about it. Since Cameroon has been a mafia country, as we all know. But they give in a lot of their time to the private sectors, and that is why, you see, most of the students in the private sector are very, very vested with, with results. They, they are result oriented because most of the, this knowledge is transferred. Why the children who happen to study in, in secondary government schools are left behind? because they know their salary will always pass. And why are they doing so? Because the payment package is very small, even at the level of the government. The no, government is not respecting no, the Where is the problem? Is it uh, because of the business-oriented uh, nature of the uh, private schools or lack of control from government? Where is the problem? Why is it that uh, teachers, notably of the private sector, uh, being treated as poorly as you seem to describe? First of all, I want to identify the lack of jobs because the scarcity of jobs, the government is not even recruiting like what they were saying that they are correct. People cannot have their career many years ago and up to this present moment, some are almost on retirement and they, ha they have not even been enrolled into the public service. Those of them who are even teaching in the private school, they, they have what they call negotiation, negotiable salary. Like what I was talking about, the Collective Convention of 1983, if you read this document, it makes me to come back to the fact that Cameroon has laws, but they don't have people of integrity that manage this law. Cameroon has institutions, but they, don't, they lack people of integrity. Because we need people of integrity to manage the institution, which are defined in every state for it to, for it to move the way it is supposed to move in order to bring results. Institutions themselves, they don't, they don't produce results. But when you have people of integrity, that is where the results come. Unfortunately, Cameroon has institutions, but they don't have people of integrity who are going to deliver the goods that is desired by the population. Now, let us go now to are this you collective... Say, are you saying that the ministers who are managing the educational sector, for example, are not people of integrity? They are not people of integrity. I want to really say it categorically clear that when you see a government where every day you keep on turning the cycle with the same people, all wine in all cups, People who are not able to manage even their own families, permit me say so. You give them a ministry to manage. Tomorrow, they embezzle state form. You take the other one, you send to prison, you put another one there. The other person can, he does not even fear that the other person has suffered suffer an issue concerning that. He goes again and mismanages. And now, why do you keep on telling the same old people who are not giving the, the expected result? Why not bring in the youngsters? The brilliant intellectuals who are supposed to deliver results. Why do you keep on telling the same people who are failing you? And that is why Cameroon needs people of integrity to manage these institutions that are existing. We now, about the poor have. treatment of teachers in the private education sector, where is the problem? Is the problem is as a result of first, let us look at the organigram of the schools. Most of these schools are not even recognized because of what they, they call, you know, in Cameroon, man no man, it goes. That is what is happening. You see a school, how do you expect that a teacher... They are not functioning within the legal from Yeah, they are not legally functioning. Most of them are not legally functioning. Let me say it categorically clear. Those who are listening to me know what I'm saying. There are many schools. Somebody who constructed a three-room house and abandoned it, it becomes a school overnight. The government does not even know it. At one moment, 
at the beginning of the school year, a list will come out of schools that the government have identified to ban. But you see, the school, same schools still function and the government is silent. If the government is silent, it means that somebody has gone somewhere and given something in order for the issue now to be erased. And you see us sending our children there from time to time. The children continue to go and they are even untaught because some of these teachers in such schools uh, 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 we hand picked because the person wants to pay you anything you he can pay because you are you yourself you know you are not a person of integrity you cannot deliver the goods of a teacher to so student. there's a problem of lack of control there is lack of control the government as i said if the government has people of integrity that manages this institution there will be control and everything will stand to normal now some teachers are also complaining about the impact of the COVID-19 on the uh, uh, activities and their income and so on. There is, for example, uh, for example, there's a school in the Dwala Five Subdivision, which I would not want to mention, uh, whose proprietors have said, "I'm not going to pay you people a dime for the month of June and July." Good, Mr. Babila. I am happy with this because it's not only that particular school. Maybe that school has just been unfortunate to be a victim of circumstances that has been exposed. There are many of such schools ranging from the from, from 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 the nursery right up to the high school many teachers who are listening to me know that they have not been paid now we come back now to this same issue of uh, control if the government knows that it has its partners that has to help them in running the school which is so responsibility as i said before therefore they should be just check and balances where if for one reason or the other like, I, I i appreciate something that came up in a, in a, in march there was a government secular that came up urging all proprietors or founders of private school to pay their teachers for the month of mass march now some school pay some resisted it is not just on pieces of paper that we need to write and circulate people should go down to the field to ensure that this decision is affected but unfortunately why should the government write out a secular like that and send to all schools I, I read the secular. And many of the schools are not respecting Many of the schools do not respect. And the government stay quiet. It means that the government is that kind of a government that works only with signature and there is no follow up. That is why I'm still coming back to people of integrity. If the government has people of integrity in the ministry, there will be these checks and balances so that controls can be thoroughly made to ensure that the teachers who have worked tirelessly in the field are paid. Permit me say so. Some of the proprietors are hiding behind the fact that COVID-19 has come to stop the payment of fees by parents. I am one of the parents. As I'm talking, I'm one of the parents. These private schools have resorted to a situation where they compress you to pay school fees all before the end of November. So if COVID-19 came in in March, when all school fees have been collected, there was a question I even asked one school, I don't want to identify his name. Say, you are compressing me, I have three children in your school. You are forcing me to pay all school fees before, before December. Are you going to pay all the teachers? Are you paying the teachers now before they work or you, they work before you, they are paid? So if you are holding me to pay all the school fees before December, you are giving me the impression that if something happens within the school year, you are going to give me the balance. That, that, that administration did not answer me. And it happened as if I foresaw it. So what is actually effect, uh, affecting is that they, they are hiding behind the situation that school fees was not all collected, which is a lie. Mr. Babila, I want to assure you that here in Douala, before December, all our children are sent home until you finish the right to the last dime. dime. I don't know why these teachers are not paid. They are supposed to pay them. If they don't pay them, the government should hold this proprietor resp responsible. If not, they should even close down their schools. In some few words, uh, what is the impact of the poor treatment of teachers on the children? The impact, the first impact is that when a teacher does not take his work, because this teaching work is a vocation, first of all, before a salary, because no empty hands also goes to their mouth. When a teacher sees hatred in what he is doing, he reduces his efficiency in production. Smaller reduces and he begins to hate the work. And when he begins to hate, the teacher who gets up in the morning wants to go there, ah, that thing, that place where they don't even pay me. Why should I even go there? The teacher goes there because of hunger, suffering. He has to pay his bills. He has friends to pay. He has to sponsor his children. The children have to feed. Even going to work now, he has to pay transport. But when the provider results, uh, 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 reacts by not paying the teacher, what do you expect? The teacher goes there, all the trouble in the high, he transfers aggression to the children. Sometimes they even say, don't beat the children, but you see the t teacher, he will not even teach. Some of it is, uh, children take their books and read, and they do any kind of a thing. The children become the victims. We, the parents, become the victim because we have paid 
but then the teachers now are not given their own package and as a result of that the children are the ones to suffer and we the parents who are paying for this for, for this education joe bonifaz ng educationist thanks for joining us today it was my pleasure coming up we're taking you to nguti in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, where some administrators, some civil servants have abandoned their duty post because of the four-year-long Anglophone crisis and the administration there, notably the senior divisional officer of the Coupe Maninguba division and other authorities are now striving to bring them back to their duty post to revive administrative functioning in that part of the Republic of Cameroon. Derry Jato reports. But I want to warn you before you get your salary cut. The subdivisional service head of Nguti subdivision and Chakri Jean Marie, the senior divisional officer for Coupe Maninguba division in a meeting, described as brief but intense. The SDO instructions were straight to the point. But I want to warn you before you get your salary cut that the salary you are uh, uh, having is the balance of the work you are supposed to, to be doing. But if you are, you are out of here and just be coming uh, once in a while to collect the credit card money and go away, be sure that uh, I will not take it like that. It is not all bed of roses, no doubt, but you are public servant and the government pays you for that. And in addition, the citizens you are to serve are coming back to Nguti. You cannot disappoint them, nor betray the government. Chakwe Jean Marie, the senior divisional officer for Coupe Maninguba Division, reiterated to this service head before closing the meeting. It is not a matter just to be coming once in a while, uh, take your salary, uh, collect credit card, manage, and that's all. No. I instructed the DO not to start accreditation for anyone who is not effectively residing here in Guti. Visiting Guti subdivision at a time COVID-19 pandemic is struggling to take the lead. The senior divisional officer wanted to leave the health realities of the Nguti people and personally went to the district medical center. The health of his population is paramount and this is what he saw. What is this? I only received it a couple of days ago. No, uh, you must make the work. It is not normal. Why do you want people to come in such an environment? The medical officer here also gave his own explanation. It was broken open. Everything was stolen. We went and recovered this on the day of my installation. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have been here for a long time and things that I have been here since uh, uh, April. And I have not received a dime. Everything that I do here, I spend my personal money. So well, how, how can I be spending my, my salary to be doing? With funds now provided, the district medical center should be immediately renovated for better services. The senior divisional officer for Coupe Maningoba Division also visited the Inspectorate of Basic Education, and this is the structure in pictures. An office level on its own at the subdivisional treasury. The senior divisional officer for Coupe Maningoba Division saw a perfect example of an office taken by vegetation. No one has seen the subdivisional treasurer here, nor have any idea of his whereabout. The divisional officer from Goti subdivision confesses to his hierarchy. He used to carry him once in a while. No, no I've never no. heard about him. Maybe to call me by telephone. Uh, we send the, the, we now that this that head of state representative uh, in Kupe Maningoba uh, division has seen the Ngoti realities himself, he is in a better position to handle things squarely in order for Nguti to fully regain its normal state. Officers of the Mbanga Gendarmerie Company in the Mongo Division Littoral Region of Cameroon have arrested three suspected um, bandits aged 22, 30 and 34 in Kake Village, Bonalea Subdivision and they were in possession of an M21 war gun, two charges, 42 ammunitions of 5.56 millimeters, six hunting bullets, locally made pistols, a huge 
quantity of cannabis, a motorcycle, and two telephones. And the National Gendarmerie is stepping up the fight against insecurity across the country. A young politician takes up the challenge to champion efforts to consolidate peace and the unity of the Republic of Cameroon. Roland Moua launched a new political party in Yaoundé earlier today. He says the party known as United Cameroon for Peace and Progress, UCPP, has as main objective to uphold the unity of Cameroon and the growth and enhance, of course, the growth and well-being of the country and its people. Now out of Cameroon, the president of Chad has reshuffled his cabinet. Meanwhile, representatives from 15 member countries of the economic community of West African states, Equus, are holding talks on how to bring the protests in Mali to an end. Immaculate Fogui has more. Nine months to the holding of presidential elections in Chad, the head of state Idris Debi Idno has proceeded to carry out some adjustments within his government. Fourteen ministers and six secretary of state have been appointed. The present Chadian ambassador to France, Amin Abbasidik, has been promoted to the post of Minister of External Relations. Maramad Zini Sharif, Minister of Communication. A new security portfolio has been created and it will be controlled by Mahmoud Matayi, former civil aviation minister. No changes were made at the Ministry of Finance, Defense, Economy and Territorial Administration. The new government of Idris Debi Igno now counts. 35 members witnessing a significant increase of youths and women. Over in Mali, authorities have freed some 20 political opponents arrested by security forces during a wave of deadly protest calling for President Ibrahim Keita to resign. Mali's capital, Bamako, remains tense after a rally on Friday turned violent with security forces reportedly firing bullets in order to disperse protesters who blocked bridges and stomped the state broadcaster and equally attacking the parliament's building. At least 11 people have died and nearly 150 others have been wounded. Talking Point is up next. I told you earlier, a young Cameroonian takes up the challenge to consolidate or to champion efforts to consolidate the unity of the Republic of it's Cameroon. Like Roland Moua launched a new political party in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, today, and he says that the party known as United Cameroon for Peace and Progress, UCPP, has as main objective to uphold the unity of Cameroon and enhance the growth and well-being of the country and her people. Roland Moua is joining us from Yaoundé. Good evening. Roland Moua, the uh, young politician who was launching a new political party with main focus on the consolidation of the unity of the Republic of Cameroon. Roland Moua, you welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us today. Some uh, few issues there connecting to uh, Roland Moua, who is joining us from the nation's political capital, Yaoundé. He is the uh, president and, or the founding president of the United Cameroon for Peace and Progress, UCPP political party launched in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, uh, today. And he indicated that the main focus of the uh, party is to champion efforts to consolidate the unity of Cameroon and enhance the growth, stability and well-being of the country and her people is joining us from uh, Yaoundé and is launching this political party at a time when the country's unity has been seriously threatened for the past four years, notably by the armed conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. And the country's uh, unity has uh, come under severe um, uh, attacks, notably uh, 
we'll call it like that, attacks because of the secessionist uh, movements in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and the struggle to restore the independence of the former Southern Cameroon's state. And he's coming in as a young politician with the focus of uh, working or better still championing efforts to consolidate the unity, the stability of Cameroon, the well-being of the country and her people through the United Cameroon for Peace and Progress UCPP political party which was launched uh, today in the nation's political capital Yaoundé. It should be noted that uh, he is a young entrepreneur who uh, is also uh, running uh, some uh, enterprises and notably uh, what he calls the One Cameroon uh, TV and he had earlier criticized the government for not supporting uh, that initiative intended to uh, work for the peace, for the consolidation of the unity, for the enhancement of the stability, the growth and well-being of Cameroon and her people will certainly be coming back to Roland Moore in a subsequent editions of the news. Thanks give you us for staying with us. We are drawing the curtains here. Goodbye.